Hello and welcome to Off The Shelf Reviews. I didn't think women's baseball could be so violent. And I'm Gary, and today we're going to review and discuss Blood Games, which released in 1990. From writers Jim Makachuk, Craig Clyde, James Hennessy, and directed by Tanya Rosenberg. Ian, why don't you give us the synopsis? Well, the story follows Babe and her all-female baseball team. They've gone up into the mountains to play some mountain men at a game of baseball with her dad, Midnight. But after Midnight had bet the other team's owner a thousand dollars on the game and they win, Minos, the man who's obviously a thousand dollars down now, decides to actually hold the money back. His son, Roy, wants to have his way with some of the women and after a bit of a violent tussle, the girls have to escape. Minos and his friends are going to hunt them down through the woods. Will the girls make a home run or will they all strike out? I swear, you drink beer the way you piss. You piss the way you drink beer. So I've always been a fan of like Grindhouse and exploitation films. Yeah, yeah. I kind of thank quentin tarantino for sort of opening the door to like that vault of movies okay yeah. in terms of like my discovery of them as well yeah and i've always been fascinated by 70s and 80s exploitation films but i didn't realize they still made them in the 90s <laughs> and well, uh, it, the 90s. Well, yeah i mean this film feels like it was made in the 70s yeah and now well with this like blu-ray transfer it looks like a modern film and so yeah watching a modern film with like the mindset of grindhouse or exploitation it was very weird very strange but <laughs> yeah. i'd never even heard of this no, film i mean actually I. I tell a lie because i'm aware of laura albert who i'm a big fan of the film the unnameable oh right yes and so when i looked her up and found out that she, she only appeared in a few movies starring in this one oh, wow but she mainly would go on to become a very successful stunt actress in in movies still yeah. working today doing stunts nice um but yeah other than that like this film where did it come from yeah <laughs> because yeah. it's also by a director who well this is her only film yeah it's like no no film work before this and none afterwards in television or anything like yeah there's not even a picture of her like i can find no. on the internet so who the, who this person was that made this i don't know it made makes me think now that this person doesn't even exist <laughs> and then they've just made up a name and like well, yeah we all made it we were ashamed we all made this film together yeah <laughs> let's put it on that nobody i don't know i don't know Man, you say it a few times. You say that every now and again we find a diamond in the rough. Yeah, we, always on the we, lookout. We, we move the muck out of the way, and we'll find a film. And I'm I'm really skeptical with that. If if people if people aren't talking about a film, or I've never heard of it, or Wikipedia doesn't have a page, I'm like, ah, why are we watching this? And then a movie comes out like Blood Games, an all female baseball team gets hunted through the woods. I'm like. How are not more people talking about this? This is insane. And like Gary said, the director, Tanya Rosenberg, she came and went. You Fine. know, like, I... I've got to give her a credit. I, I enjoyed this movie. I know, I know what you're going to say. Ian, you're mad. How can you? It's fucking, it's fucking shit. I don't know. I just... I just got lulled into it. You know, all of a sudden, we're, we're, we're in this birthday party. It's... Roy's birthday party. Who's a Roy? I have no fucking idea, man. This movie establishes characters really badly. I had to, I had to listen and be like, "Who are they talking about? What character? Rewind? Where? Oh, that part. Oh, that oh there was a moment where they had their names on the backs of their shirts. I was like, "Oh, thank God." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's just the girls. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, because unfortunately for me, none of the girls have very identifiable traits other than their appearances. Yeah, they're gen you know generically all the same. There's none Babes? other than Babe. Yeah, as yeah. Well, Albert. Yeah. She stands out, but the rest of them, they, they, yeah, they have little moments throughout the film. But this opening of the film takes fifteen to twenty minutes. Yeah, watching them play baseball, and I'm like, I get it. But who is all these people? Like we like taking that longer sequence in the opening of the film, we should at least get an understanding of who these characters are and their relations to each other. But it doesn't really come across. The film is exploitation, and mm -hmm. a lot of the camera shots and angles like sort of crop the women's heads off. Yeah, yeah, and their legs. So, so we're basically just getting their chest. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and their crotch. Yeah, I'm like. 
it, it makes you, and this is definitely a male director. I'm like, nope, 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 it's a female director. Like, but making, well, ex- we making exploitation. We think it's yeah, a female director. Yeah. You know? But it, it has like that vibe, that feel though yes. of exploitation. But, uh, and yeah, so yeah, it comes across a bit cringy, but at the same time, it's kind of, it's also like kind of being humorous about it. Now, yeah. these girls are being sexually harassed or, yeah. throughout the game as the guys are trying to grab their asses and touch them and fondle them yeah. throughout this entire sequence and the girls are winning. Yes. And then the guys, like, well, they lose their tempers and then they start getting violent with the girls during the game. Yeah. So Roy, whose birthday is it, played by Gregory Cummings, um, he's the first one that you see. Obviously, he nails one of the girls in, um, in the face of his elbow as she runs past. Uh, that girl is called Stony. Um, and I, like I said, I had to start guessing the names, like following them, like, oh, who's that? Who's this? You I'm know. glad you can even remember their names <laughs> at this point after the movie. <laughs> Mate, I, I, I try to pay attention sometimes. Oh, okay. um, but I, I just like the way that the movie easily just established that here's your girl baseball team. They're really good. And, you know, yes, movie language is just like, let's put them in tight shorts. Let's put them in white tops. You know, let's make the men <laughs> they look more like, like waitresses from Hooters. <laughs> they're a sports they team. Do, they do. <laughs> they do. But it also just easily establishes all the men as the, the horrible villains of the movie. And so you're just like, okay, I, I'm, I'm going with this. You know, we've also got... Uh, Midnight, played by Ross Hagen, um, who's the coach, who's also Babe's uh, dad as well. And so he's, he, you, you learn through some dialogue that he's in some debt and he's put a lot of money onto this game and he wants them to win, even if the men are playing like fucking assholes, just beat them girls, just absolutely beat them. Do you know the uh, the guy who played Midnight was a voice in Red Dead Redemption? Yes, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like, oh my God. Um, then you've got Minor Collins, uh, played by Luke Shea, who is Roy's dad. He's got the cowboy hat. He's got the you know surly look on his face, and he wants Roy to win. He does, and I hated him from the moment he popped up on screen. <laughs> I had an immediate, I don't like your face, but I don't know why. And then it hit me. Oh, that's a wrap. Hellraiser Free, the worst Cenobite in cinematic history. I was like, no, Shit, no, was he the cameraman, the was camera he? Cenobite. <laughs> oh, dog, no. Have you seen what he did to me, you little bitch? Have you seen? Whoa, what the? <laughs> That's a wrap. Shock, shock so, face. So, I hated him immediately. <laughs> I don't know, I kind of like how he's a free, but yeah, yeah, he's got some bad... He's, but it, the actor is establishing this bad character. And the same with the guy who's playing Roy. You know, these men are bad. And so... I'll give you what, there was one really good bit of acting, whether it was intentional or not. Okay, yeah. But when Dad is talking to Roy about how he's blowing the game and the money and yeah, yeah. and he's wishing him happy birthday, there's a moment where he raises his hand yeah. and Roy flinches from him. Yeah. And I was like, oh, he's been beating his son. Like, yeah. we get that relationship and it, and it carries on. Like, it's not mentioned or brought up. And I was like, that was a really nice little acting moment yeah. that told me more than any of the dialogue just did. Exactly. <laughs> it was that little bit where he's like, well, maybe I take after mum and Roy's just... Yeah. Um, uh, Roy's dad's just like, don't say that about your mother. And I'm like, oh, there's, there's hostility here. I, I, I'm I'm liking this, that maybe Roy is a bad guy because of his environment upbringing, not intentionally. I don't know. I don't know how long they've lived up in these mountains for, or even, we don't even know really where they are. You know, it's literally just right out in the woods, somewhere scary for these girls to be, you know, tra- uh, tracked. And the girls win the game. And they they are obviously happy. They're celebrating, and so are we because we get a ten minute shower sequence. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, boobies everywhere, Ian. Boobies <laughs> everywhere. There's just I, you know, the the camera work was just <laughs> yeah dodgy. <laughs> But then we get the dodgiest character of them all. <laughs> yeah. Sperving on the girls. We get the legend George Buck Flower, who we saw at the game, and now he's here perving on the girls, fondling the wall, grunting at them. Oh, 
Yeah, he's there. He's perving on the girls. He's trying to cop a feel here and there. And then the girls grab him and drag him to the showers. And he's just got like a complete whip. Like, uh, Mr. Collins sent me with yeah. his money for you, Midnight. Right, Midnight grabs the money. He's like, it's only $100. There was supposed to be $1,000. And yeah. so he's like, girls, deal with this tramp. I'm going to go and get the money. Yeah, which I kind of liked as the Midnight character because... Even though it's established that he's in debt and he's probably using this baseball team to pay for his debts and things like that. So he's exploiting his daughter, um, you know, and this whole team. He's actually also looking out for them because he's taking a gun, you know, to face Mr. Collins and he's going to get that money. So he says to the girls, get on the bus, wait for me. And we get the fight sequence in the toilet. <laughs> now... Mission Impossible did it better, I think. <laughs> Mission Impossible with Tom Cruise and Henry Cavill fighting that guy in the toilet was pretty good. Well, yeah. I'd even say, you know, maybe the fight in True Lives was pretty badass in the toilet. This wasn't either of those. <laughs> well, yeah, well, with very low budget, yeah. with probably without any stunt actors. No. I think they did an okay job. They wrestled yeah. for the gun. They wrestled in the toilet store for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Dad eventually gets the upper hand <laughs> and then he ties him up and gags him, takes the money, and leaves. What does he say to him? Something like, I am the devil, and I'm going to bring hell to you or something? You're fucking with the devil now, boy. <laughs> That's what Mr. Collins says just before his legs are taken out, because he's still got his pants halfway down his fucking <laughs> legs. And what was great is that midnight, the coach takes his money, puts it away. He then ties Mr. Collins to the toilet, and then shoves a piece of paper in his mouth. So then everybody who comes into in. the toilet, all they can hear from the cubicle, which Mr. Collins is in, is muffled shouting. So they think he's just taking a big shit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, it's actually one of my favorite scenes in the film because it was just the comedy moment yes. of that other guy coming in, pissing, looking over. And because I, because of the way it was filmed or edited, I, was, I thought he was looking at him. <laughs> yeah. And then just chose to ignore him. Did. Um, did he burst the balloon as well before he left? He did. Right. I was like, that was the comedy moment, the punchline. And he just left. And yeah, and then somebody else eventually comes in, opens the door and goes, oh my God. Oh. But, we're, but we're also watching Roy and his friend sitting at the bar. Uh, they've just had an arm wrestling competition. They're having some beers. You know, Roy's just enjoying his birthday. But Roy's got a bit of a craving. He needs to, you know, play with a small pet. Or that's what he said. He said something about pussy. I don't, I don't fully yeah, get it. Yeah. Um, so they decide that, you know, if the girls are nearby on their bus, then, you know, maybe they can get some action. And the girls are on the bus, and two of the girls decide that they're going to head to the bar to find Midnight, because he's taking a little while. Um, so as they head to the bar, they happen to come across Roy and Holt, and Roy and Holt start to uh, sexually assault the two girls. Uh, man, it was a bit cringy. It was really awkward and it really, uh, you know, fueled the fire that I hated these guys. Oh, yeah. Know? So I'm like, wow, this is this is the first 30 minutes into the movie. The movie's only an hour and a half. And I'm already at that point where I hate the bad guys. I want the girls to get out there. And I'm actually excited to see where the story goes. I was excited. Well, I mean, I'm not excited for a rape scene. Of no, course, no, yeah, yeah. I'm not, I was yeah, kind no, of go, excited go. for the film to sort of shift gear and yes. get going. Yes. Like, get that bus going, girls. Yes. Like, let's get on the road. Let's, let's have some some action in this this movie. And, uh, yeah, and what happens is that Dad comes over to help out. He ends up getting stabbed by yeah. Roy, and the girls manage to get away. Babe also turns up with the gun yeah. and shoots and actually injures Roy, yeah. which, of course infuriates him even more so he rallies with Holt to now go and chase the girls and at one point he jumps out in front of the bus starts shooting yeah they both got guns they're just doing a drive-by on this bus as they're trying to escape the girls yeah. are trying to escape with obviously their dad you know stabbed and things are going off the, the 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 one of the girl baseball players she's driving the bus she takes a bullet to the forehead right and the bus crashes into Roy and kills him right <laughs> oh they killed the main <laughs> bad guy yeah, I was like <laughs> Well, I guess, well, we know dear old dad is going to be the real bad guy. Yeah. As he then eventually, well, he gets led out there by Holt, sees his boy, and he's like, right, you, 
you know, scout, go and chase them. You guys listen to your CBs. I'll contact you when we found them. Yeah. And, and uh, we cut to him like having a his montage where he's pulling out his <laughs> rifles and his knives. Yeah. And he's got his like ex-military stuff all over the place. Because Mr. Collins, it turns out he's like an ex-mercenary. So I'm assuming he may have served time in Ver- Vietnam, you know, and he's been making money on the side. But he, he's living out in the woods, so in the mountains. So he likes to hunt. You know, he's got his camo gear and he's looking to seek revenge for his son. But I just... I couldn't help but shake the feeling that I just hate you, man. You know, the movies yeah. the movies made you the villain, which kudos to the movie. You know, it's 30 minutes in. I hate the bad guys. I'm worrying about the girls. You know, dad's midnight is bleeding to death. You know he's going to die. One of them, one of the girls has already been shot in the face. A couple of them have been sexually assaulted. So for me, I'm like, wow, this movie is not letting up. You know, it's they, they, they've got a plot. And they're really trying to hammer it home. You know, they've got a really low budget. So kudos to the actors and actresses for actually putting themselves out there to film these sequences. Um, but Mr. Collins, yeah, he's he's sending out his guys onto scouting missions because they're heading up to some ridge area. That's right, yeah. You know, and if, if they get up there, they can watch the girls uh, on the road. And the girls are just screaming along in their bus. And they stop by a, an abandoned gas station. They were like, oh... Maybe there's some help. And I'm like, uh, no. <laughs> right. Keep fucking driving. <laughs> but it's a horror movie trope. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, they wander around. And she picks up the phone receiver because it's off. And she can hear voices. Yeah. And they're planning to try to... You know, she can hear overhear them uh, as they're talking about where the girls are going to possibly be. And, yeah, two guys come out. And then another shootout occurs. Yeah. And she kills a couple of them. They shoot at the bus a whole bunch. But yeah. manage to, to drive away. I was, I was really glad when they actually killed off a couple of guys because I was like, well, you're balancing it out. You're killing yeah. the girls and killing the villains at the same time. Yeah, yeah. But So they keep driving out there and eventually they come to a roadblock. There's a couple of guys there with rifles and, well, Babe decides to steer the bus down this other road and the camera pans back to reveal, well, the road ends in six miles. Well, man, I, 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 I'm sorry to interrupt you there, but we've also got, before that, one of the possibly funniest chase sequences ever between Vern and Hoyt chasing the bus. Yes. <laughs> How did I forget? How did I forget? Because at this point in the film, I was like, okay, so Vern and Holt are now becoming my two favorite characters in the film. <laughs> because they're because, fucking idiots. Because they are bumbling idiots. <laughs> now, but the thing that, that was the, the thing that this film annoyed me with right. is the tone yeah. is that I'm trying to enjoy like a, you know, a rape revenge like slasher thriller yes. movie yeah, yeah. but then the film has these really idiots like real idiots in the film yeah, yeah. that are, are clueless and bungling around and I'm like so they're comedy? yeah and, and and the film is also like there's moments where it's like here's some boobs be titillated <laughs> and then here's a rape sequence and you're like no movie uh, like yeah. like tonally like I'm with you and then you're you're like yanking me one way or the other yeah and so I didn't I didn't know how to feel about it and I think it's detrimental to this film that it is so tonally incoherent in that regard but yeah it makes up for it by being like um um spontaneous and the fact that you don't exactly know where it's going to go yeah however i did know going into this film that it will end in the woods and loads of people are gonna be running around in the woods killing each other and i'm like but that's like every low budget like slasher horror movie when you got no money to film it in the woods yeah, yeah and so i was worried when the woods started to come into the film but then yeah but the vernon holt character i like the the There's, sped up footage of uh, them chasing the bus yeah like him jumping onto the bus jumping on popping the bus. shots down you got buck flowers <laughs> trying to fire a rifle the girls are firing back and yeah like you said tonally it's all over the place but part of me is just like isn't that the charm for late 80s <laughs> early 90s movies that you know they were funny and titillating and exciting and stupid and you know i i didn't fully want deliverance right you know because i think with with the with the girls baseball team you know the movie's already set the the idea that you know we're kind of parodying you know some of these things but we've also got to give the girls something so that they just 
you know, you just don't hate them throughout the movie and you want them to die. So then when you've got, like you said, when he jumps on the top of the bus and he's trying to shoot down and then the bridge comes along and, <laughs> and he decides to it, jump off the and each one. one. But then she swerves, <laughs> doesn't she? Swerves she? And he gets... he's got to fly off. And then Buck Flowers is coming back in, the, in his <laughs> truck and then he gets taken out and he's just like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Hoyt. I'll get you a new truck. I'm, I'm like, you guys were drinking like eight beers before you got in that car. I'm surprised you didn't kill yourselves getting there. <laughs> yeah, but what, here's a like just to show you the levels of the dialogue or the script writing yeah. in this film where he's yeah. just like man you drink like you piss <laughs> well you piss <laughs> like you drink <laughs> I'm like what or, I swear you drink beer the way you piss you piss the way you drink beer <laughs> okay. it was so bad but I couldn't <laughs> help enjoying it they're not exactly Tucker and Dale but you know it's like that, that they, these are our characters for now but it's like but I don't want I'm not, I don't really want to be rooting for a freaking rapist <laughs> no, but no oh you're, you're more entertaining than, than all the rest of the gang that are chasing after these girls because I don't know any of them either yeah but we do now get to spend some time with the girls and the panic as they sort of get divided a little bit. As Babe is like, look, we're, we've gone down this road to the dead end. It's 30 miles yeah. across the mountain to get to civilization again. It's either we stay here and fight or we go. And, well, all the girls decide eventually to go. Well, I, I kind of liked the way that Babe was the main girl. But... She obviously didn't have any survival skills. She wasn't much of a fighter. She wasn't just going to spontaneously just go, oh yeah, I know how to make pit traps and do all these different things to kill these guys Rambo style. She honestly was like, girls, I'm trying to keep you all alive. My dad's dead. He's literally dead and I have to leave him on this bus with this other girl who's dead. We need to get to the police and, and you know, get some help. And so some of the girls were like, yeah, okay, we'll go with you, babe. And then you've got one of them, Donna, who's just like, look, I'm sick and tired of running. I want to fight. And I, and I kind of got behind the Donna character because they've just sat on the bus for like 15, 20 minutes being shot at by some guys. They've just got to a dead end. She's like, no, fuck it. Let's set the bus to explode or something. Let's make some traps. And so they do end up breaking up a couple of the girls end up staying behind to you know set a trap or something and babe and a few of the other girls they start to make the long trek but mr collins minos well he's a fucking commando he's got a crossbow i mean when i saw that crossbow i was like <laughs> this motherfucker's probably done this more than once right <laughs> yeah you know and he starts to obviously sneak up on some of the girls. Well, the girls do get the upper hand fighting, uh, you know, because you get Vern and Hoyt come across the three girls and they fucking hang Vern. Right. <laughs> Damn, yeah. I mean, I, I like Buck Flowers. Man, they, they fucking lynched his ass. <laughs> and they threw Hoyt off this cliff. Now, Hoyt... I thought he was dead, but he comes back and he's I just thought he like, was dead the first time. Like, <laughs> I thought he was going to die at the beginning. I thought he was going to die when he off the bus. I thought he was going to die when he went off the cliff. Yeah. <laughs> I thought he was going to die every time. He loses his time. He just goes there in life. But he convinces the rest of the posse. He's just like, oh no, they killed Vern. We need to go fight them. And, and Mr. Collins ends up sneaking up on the three girls in their trap. He kills one of the girls with a crossbow, bolt shot. Uh, Donna and the, uh, one of the girls, Louise, they try to make a run, but Louise gets grabbed. And we get this rape sequence. And I was like, holy shit, movie. You know, like, you've probably, the, 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 the people behind this movie probably watched Deliverance and said, right, okay, we need to at least have one rape sequence in this. But I just didn't realize it would be as graphic. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it, like I said, and, and, and I feel. The uncomfortability in any Massive, rape scene yeah. watching it, of course. Um, but more so in this one because of some of the other, like, more... I don't want to say light-hearted, but, like, more, like, generic film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, like, like, the shock of an actual rape scene happening in here where it's kind of been, like, titties are great and bums are great, and then it's, like, rape, and it's, like, oh... Yeah, you sat there, you're like, just, like, okay, I'm waiting for the girls yeah, to come and, back and, and, and kill these guys. And because it's also Hoyt as well, who has kind of been, like, this inept bad guy, yeah. and when he's the one doing all the raping, you're just, like... Well, I just hope they just drop a grenade right next to the lot of you right now. Cause, yeah. Yeah, it, it's rough. But then the girls do turn up and they beat the seven bells out of these guys. Yeah, they kill a couple of them and they save Louise and they're making a run. But one of the guys gets his gun and he shoots Louise as she's running and, and she's left for dead. We've already lost um, Stoney as well. Yeah. The girl who took the elbow to the face. She ended up being pinned to a tree by Mr. Collins. Her yeah. skirt was way too short. What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, 
Uh, now, there's a, there's a second girl as well who also gets shot by the crossbow. Right. Uh, I can't remember which one it is, but it's, a, it's about the hour mark in I the film. I think it was when they were in that trap sequence, That's wasn't right, it? Yeah. One of them gets shot right in the yeah. gut, yeah. But um, <laughs> it's a bit of a mistake. Right. Where uh, you, we see her looking out into the field, then it cuts to him with the crossbow, yeah. then it cuts to her going, Hoop! Yeah. and she gets hit. <laughs> but in the very first shot, the arrow's already there. It's already in her stomach as she's that. looking out. I didn't know it was And that. then we see him cock it and fire it, and then she just goes, huh! <laughs> it was already there. And I was like, what was that? Oh, oh, well, no. It's like, what? maybe it was a branch. Maybe you mistook a branch. <laughs> we'll have to check. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm right. <laughs> but yeah, the girls do start getting picked off. And I was like, okay, yeah, they are all falling one by one. But I was like, well, maybe, maybe now we'll get some more characterization with these girls. Not really. Not no. really. I mean, the pace has just been going i i felt like right from the start it was just like establish the girls establish the bad guys here's the bad thing that's happened now we're racing on the road now we're off mm -hmm. the bus now we're heading up the mountains and i'm like okay so so it got to a point where um i think it's like i said the girl donna she she jumps out and she ends up shooting mr collins in the gut that's right she, he throws a knife her at the same time yeah, yeah right into her leg so she's injured and he's wounded and then he kind of slowly looked at the wound and i saw it was in the stomach i was like oh motherfucker that's a movie stomach wound you gonna die um and then he kind of just laid there and then it faded to white and i was like oh shit they've killed him off so roy's dead he's dead who's left hoyt yeah. is he the bad guy <laughs> and there were still 15 minutes left yeah you yeah. know i was just no. like there was some, I, I felt some really good cinematography towards this latter part of the film as mm. well. Now, when Louise got shot, like in the slow-mo, it's the way that yes. she fell. I was like, the actress had great posture, the framing, the composition. The so everything was really good. It's some really good camera work. But there is so much slow motion yeah, in this too film. Too much. Like, I <laughs> just it started to great on my nerves quite a bit. I was like, this film would have been over by now if it wasn't for all the damn slow-mo. Yeah. Um, but uh, there's, uh, I, I don't remember, did somebody throw smoke grenades or did the woods just go, oh, God. <laughs> like, welcome to Silent Hill? Yeah, right. I don't know, but it was really moody it and was... atmospheric. I was like, it's great. But then it was so much, I was like, I can't see anything <laughs> can't anymore. See like, kill it with a smoke machine, guys. You've done it. <laughs> I was like, yeah, the girls are hiding in the tree because Babe's like, right, that's enough. We need to make a stand now. We're going to have to fight. And then the smoke's coming in and I'm like, yeah, like you said. Somebody turned that fucking smoke machine off because that shouldn't be this much. Even Hoyt was walking around like, I can't see, where is everybody? And I'm like, this is your land. Right. You should know. But he gets taken out. All the other guys get taken out. And you're thinking, wow, okay, so the girls have survived. And they make it up to this ridge area, this campsite that they've been aiming for. And when they get up there, it was abandoned. And I'm waiting for some hockey mask wearing motherfucker to step <laughs> out. I was expecting the girl from Sleepaway Camp to right. just jump out of an I'm like, you should have used this as your fucking set. This is great. Um... But Babe's just like, look, I need to go look for some help. You girls get in this cabin, just bunker down. And while the girls are in that cabin, we see Mr. Collins is not dead. What? <laughs> yeah. He's managed to climb up the rest of this mountain with this stomach wound. He's still got a couple of shots on his crossbow and he starts to shoot at the girls. So obviously they're shooting back and him and Babe have this final fight. And, and like you said, Laura Albert, I... I, other than the unnameable, unnameable, I can't think of anything else I remember seeing her in other right. than this as well. And I've got to give her credit. She was a bit of a scream queen kind of last victim Laurie style yeah, character. Yeah. She's fighting this bad guy, but she's got no skills. She's got no ammo left. Mm -hmm. She's basically having him chase her up this you know, mill kind of machinery all the yeah. way to the top. And they get into the tower. She kind of hides somewhere up there. And by the time he gets up there, yeah. well, she just swings off this chain and kicks him right back off. I was like, oh, well, well that was, that was anticlimactic, but at least, well, he I fell well. Yeah. And then he lands, <laughs> on, he lands on that. <laughs> Something. <laughs> Something which kind of cuts Nub up and I'm like, I like, yeah. I like the fact that we heard the sound effect of the thud. Yes. Followed by the wet kind of <laughs> noise. I was like, it's very rare you'll hear that. So I appreciated that sound effect, whereas I did not appreciate the music 
or the uh, the additional dialogue or voice or noise or the foley or any of it. Yeah. Like the audio levels for everything oh, was all mi- mix uh, or mismatched together. Yeah. So the like I was volume up, volume down, volume up, volume down. There was background characters that were louder than foreground characters yeah. at times, and it was quite jarring and cheap and amateur. But I was satisfied watching him fall to his death. <laughs> yeah. And then you get this kind of final sequence where the last few remaining girls, they kind of look at the camera, but they're looking past the camera. And then you watch the girls that have been killed kind of running forward in their uniform. Right. It's a, it, it's a montage of remember the fallen. Yeah. Remember those that died along the way. Yeah. And then the girls <laughs> walk away and we finish on a still shot of Midnight and Babe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 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 What were your favourite scenes? Oh man, I, I, you know, just they like the entire film has issues and problems and certain things, but I just liked the, you know, like I said the, the 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 baseball game was a bit of a drag, but it established and the girls could play. I enjoyed it. I mean, who who doesn't like short shorts? Um, <laughs> You know, Holt and Vern driving their little truck. You know, they were stupid and they were the comedy element for the film. Maybe they shouldn't have been in it, but I do like Buck Flowers. I think he's fun. And so his little shower sequence and then him driving the truck drunk. It's also the fact that he's wearing a um, Big Trouble Little China I, cap as well. I want that motherfucking the cap. The check is in the mail. I was searching while I was watching the film. <laughs> I can't find it. I'm going to get one. <laughs> it was just, yeah, it was Big Trouble Little China right there. Buck Flowers. Woohoo. Um... Some of the fight sequences in the forest as well, like I said, when Donna's group got attacked, I like I said, I missed the arrow sequence, but I I, I liked how they got attacked. And yes, I, I'm not saying I liked the rape sequence, but I did like the way that it was filmed, the actors doing their parts. You know, the, the, the redneck guys were really there, like egging on Hoyt, and he was the bastard and you wanted him to die. So then when you get that smoke-filled area, which is over the top, you're thinking, yeah, this is where you die, bitch. And then <laughs> Mr. Collins' death at the end, the squelch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fun. <laughs> yeah, I don't have any acting moments in the <laughs> film. Like, I was cringing really bad when Dad was dying and Babe was just like, oh, Daddy. I'm just like, oh, please. <laughs> yeah, just like, die. the acting here. <laughs> Roy wasn't bad. Yeah, the, I, I'd say Roy was one of the one of the better actors, but he's only in, like, the first act. Yeah. And he's yeah. out of the film. And I was like, he was pretty good. But, yeah, generally speaking, all the acting was bad. Yeah. But so I've got no acting like favorite scenes. But the the bathroom scene when when he's been tied up and the other guy comes in, he goes, "Well, it's weird sounds," and <laughs> pops the balloon and walks out. I was like, yeah. that was really quite funny. I don't know if it was intentional, <laughs> but it was really quite funny. <laughs> don't let them knockers hypnotize you, boy. <laughs> yeah. It's like, damn you, goddamn George Buckflower. How are you so funny, man? How are you so funny? Uh, so it's uh, yeah, it's not a great moment or anything, but it's the way he said it. I knew, I knew when I got this, I'd be president. <laughs> right? It's just no matter what lines you give him, he just makes it work, right? Well, I swear, you drink beer the way you piss. You piss the way you drink beer. I guess like Roy getting his comeuppance watching him get squished between yeah. like the, the car or the, the garbage or, like trolley or whatever it was yeah, that yeah. squished him. It's like, yeah, good, glad to see him go. Yeah. Uh, and I guess like even though I've complained about all the slow-mo in the film, there was one shot that I thought was really cool and it's where the truck swerves and the tire comes right around the front of the camera kicking all the dirt up into the lens wow. and then it stops there. I was like, hey, that was a cool action shot. And yeah. this like low budget independent movie. I was like, that was kind of cool. Yeah. And I did like the cinematography of the woods. Like it had a mood and an atmosphere to yeah. it. Mm. However, I'll also give another nay to it as well because there was one <laughs> shot where the camera's like, here's the woods. There's a tree on the left. It's all bushes. 10 seconds later and nothing the camera's still there we're like what am I is there a predator in there I thought that I thought oh no they're the characters they finally go I'm like why did you like I guess you needed the film to be 90 minutes so here's an unedited shot in the middle of the film well I felt because I was sat there like why are they doing and then I could see Mr. Collins moving and I'm like yeah. oh you're you're trying to to tell us that he's using the cover and the trees right. but we can't fucking see him 
So, so yeah, you know, some real bizarre choices. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, like uh, in terms of a favorite favorite scene, it will probably be Holt and Vern in the truck chasing after them on the bus, yeah. and him getting on and shooting it and getting knocked off into the river. Yeah, yeah. Ian, do you recommend Blood Games? I kind of do recommend Blood Games. A part of me wishes I'd seen this when I was younger. I think this would have been one of those films I'd have been constantly telling people about. Like, me and my male friends would have probably have watched it numerous times together. Not like that, you know, you know, like we did with, like, 80s horror movies and stuff like that. I'm sure you and I would have fucking been all over this movie when we... You ever seen Blood Games? Yeah, I've seen it! Oh, my God! Um... It has some real negatives going for it that a lot of other movies obviously fail on it. But at the same time, I can't seem to shake that it's a first time director. Uh, it's a real low budget. You know, the actors and actresses haven't exactly got a stellar career underneath their belt other than Buck Flowers, I would say. Um, or the cameraman from Hellraiser 3. I just, you know, where you go? Is pretty Laura sexual. Alberts as well. But they, they, they take the material that they've got and they go with it and they work with it and the pacing goes and you know there were moments in the film that I kept pausing going how long's left oh my god how are you going to wrap this up and so instead of wanting to turn it off and walk away I wanted to see how this was going to end so I recommend it to people who have never seen it just to give it a try you may not like it but then at the same time you might like me and Gary find little bits like Oh, that camera work works. Oh, that audio's terrible. Oh, that special effect was great. Oh, Jesus Christ, I can't believe they did that. And by the end of it, if you've had fun, well, you've had fun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, I mean, as a low-budget, independent exploitation film, Blood Games delivers on its premise, and it does remain fairly entertaining throughout. Enough so for me to give this the lowest recommendation that I can give that's still a recommendation. And that is only really for fans of, you know, the revenge genre. You know, these thrillers should, they should really check this one out, I feel. It's very well shot with some great composition and some fairly effective and atmospheric scenes, which was surprising as, like most chase revenge thrillers that spend half the runtime running through the woods tend to get boring fast. Blood Games makes up for this with some decent production value in sets and locations. The music, though, is a real mixed bag. <laughs> the tense, one-note slow motion worked well, but the repetitive theme or score by Greg Turner was irritating. It was awful. Made worse that the score repeats itself over and over and over, and then speeds up when the chases begin. It was embarrassingly bad annoying distracting and cheap and on par with the film's bad audio levels it felt very amateur the cast was fine the writing not so much it was great to see laura albert in a leading role and always great to see buck flower show up for a few laughs the acting overall was okay to dreadful for the most part still it was entertaining you know they had boobs guns blood stunts and a good pace. So a very, 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 very low recommendation. Maybe worth a watch. Batter up. <laughs> Thanks for watching Off The Shelf Reviews. Mm -hmm.